Good evening. Welcome to Ryland Baptist Church. We're happy to have you here today. Uh, we're going to start the service with a, a song, page 685 in your songbooks. Um, we're actually we're having some technical difficulties up here, so we're not going to have the songs up here, so you have to look in your songbooks the old fashioned way. Page 685. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold But in that city where the rats and will shine I want a gold one, that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never grow Someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are pure as gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pill was stone. And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday yonder we will never more wander But walk on streets that are pure as gold or lonely I'm not discouraged I'm heaven bound I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city I want a mansion a harp and a crown I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk on streets that are pure as gold all right kathy if you'll uh, play another verse of that and let's greet each other welcome to brian the baptist church this evening amen To the service and as we open we want to remember all of our campers up in Belgium uh, not only from here but they came uh, from a number of different places and pastor reports that one has been saved already so we praise the Lord for that and so let's keep praying and just lifting that up to the Lord uh, let's open in, in a word of prayer just now as we begin Lord thank you so much for the beautiful day that you've given us privilege, the opportunity that we have, uh, Lord, to look forward to being together this evening. Thank you that we can sing praises and that, Lord, we can fellowship together. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have of all being together in heaven someday, and we look forward to that. Thank you for this one that was saved at camp. 
already. And we pray for others who may be there that do not know Christ. Uh, Lord, that you work in their hearts continually as they're exposed to the gospels. They see the other young people who are saved, Lord, just enjoying themselves, having a good time and uh, fellowshipping together. We just pray, Lord, for your blessing upon uh, Brother Corey Myers. He preaches through the rest of this week. Brother Ed Taylor, as he preaches next week. Lord, we pray that you'll uh, just give strength and energy to pastor all the workers, the counselors, uh, Lord, as they have a, a busy schedule there. And we pray you'd just help everyone to have a good time, an enjoyable time. And Lord, we ask uh, that you would bless here this evening. Lord, open our hearts uh, as we are here together. And we pray that you would speak to us, give us something that we can take with us and use for your glory. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, and you may be seated. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, reminder for men's prayer meeting this Friday morning, 6 o'clock, we'll meet right here uh, for that time. We look forward to it. And then that same day at 5 o'clock, we'll have pastoral prayer time uh, here as well. And any of those, that, uh, if you men that want to join us, your schedule works, and you can. We'd love to have you. Uh, anybody that wants to come in the afternoon at the pastoral prayer time we'd love to have you as well and then uh, this week of course the senior camp is ongoing through next week so let's continue to pray for that heart to heart tomorrow evening and that'll be at 6 30 uh, right here at the church uh, actually next door i believe they'll be meeting so let's keep that in mind and uh, then our next men's Monday will be August 6th, and uh, as you can see, as you come in the foyer, their vacation Bible school is soon uh, approaching, so uh, we want to keep that in prayer as well. All right, we'll, uh, we'll stop right there for a moment. Let's hear from one of our missionaries at this time uh, that we've had the joy of helping support for many years, um, Dr. Kiatasak Serapanadorn, his wife Pat, and they've served in Thailand for many, many years. And so I'll read some of his uh, latest letter that we received from him. While we were are doing church planting at Shanghai, all of our pastors have been praying for his open door that we could bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to villages along the borders of Myanmar, and some of us may know that as Burma and Laos and China. Thank the Lord for answers to our prayers. Two years ago, we were able to send Pastor Aheu Aja, our first Aka missionary to Myanmar. Praise and thank the Lord for one church established. And then there are three Aka pa pastors who are doing work planting, uh, church planting in Sod town of Myanmar. Uh, then another guy, Pastor Jati, J-A-T-I, and his church, uh, started church planting almost two years, two and a half years ago at Mejo town of Myanmar, about 10 miles away from Pastor Jati Church at Thailand border. Uh, month of December 2017, I was permitted to cross the Thai border to go to the village at Myanmar for church dedication and where three Burmese soldiers came to the meeting uh, for our security. And then three months ago, the church building is almost finished, and they're hoping to have the church dedication soon uh, there for that. So pray for the leadership of Pastor Jati and his three Burmese pastors as they, as they work together serving as a team. And then uh, pray for the members of this church as they're, uh, they need a, a church building. They're praying for a building that will seat 800 people. And that's a wonderful thing. They're... 300 to 350 attending on Sunday and over 200 children. And so we rejoice with uh, Brother Sarah Panadorn and all that uh, the Lord is doing there. All right. Um, someone, uh, let's see, we have a, an email address here. If someone would take this and just send a note to Brother Kiatasak and say, thank you for serving the Lord. We prayed for you this week. Who would take this and, and send a note to Brother Sarah Panadorn? All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Alrighty, thank you. And um, just a little bit later, we're going to be praying for all of our missionaries, uh, but just highlighting the Sarah Panadorns. Uh, Brother Mann is going to come with a couple of more songs for us.
So uh, we're actually going to do what we did last week. We're going to open up to the floor and we're going to ask for testimonies. Before you give your testimony, you're going to give a song out of this blue book so there's no confusion. I know there's a couple down over there. But uh, you're going to give your song you want to sing and then your testimony. Um, do we have any testimonies? Or a favorite song? I know it's kind of short notice. Or we're having some problems with the projector. We don't have uh, our usual tech guys back there. Carlton. Man, that's good, that's good. Page 51, Blessed Assurance. It's a good song. Gotcha. Page 51, Blessed Assurance. You, get, you can remain seated as you sing this song. story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bringing above Echoes of mercies, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior Testimonies. Miss Teague, yes. It's good. Page three ninety one. Three ninety one. Awesome. The light of the world. It's a good song. So we'll sing one verse in the chorus, and then we'll go on to the next testimony. The light of the world. I'm actually forward to this. Our next testimony. Yes, sir.
mask good. Peace. Gray is that faith one. It's good. Hundred fifty. testimonies. And uh, let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 34, if you would please, Psalm 34. Uh, anyone need a handout sheet? Brother Kivy has those. If you missed it coming in, he'd be happy to, if you'll raise your hand, put one of those in your hand. And just um, following along with our uh, uh, lesson this evening, Psalm 34. All of us have had times in our Christian walk. If you've been saved for any length of time, you have reached a point at some point in time when you just wanted to quit and just just be done with everything. You're so discouraged and ready to just throw in the towel. And that's where David was. He was discouraged. He was defeated at this point. And uh, that just gives us a little background for this psalm. Uh, so he, uh, he goes down to a place called Gath where the Philistines are. He's tired of running. He's not king yet. Saul's after him trying to kill him. And he's tired of running. And he just wants some rest, just, just to be at a place where he's not being chased and hunted like a wild animal. I think we can relate to that, can't we? we? None of us would enjoy that. But he got so discouraged about the whole thing, he said, I'm going to, to go to a place where the Philistines are, the arch enemies of Israel. And he did. And he went and hooked up with a guy named Achish, who was like the title of the Philistine leader there in a place called Gath. And he stays there for a while, and then they figure out, this is David. This is the guy that killed Goliath, and they arrested him <laughs> while he was there. And so this psalm then is looking back on that experience and saying to us what David learned from that. And I think it's a helpful thing as we do that. So uh, that's kind of a little bit of background leading up to this. Uh, let's begin, if you will, just reading the first uh, 10 verses of this psalm. Verses 1 through 10, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord 
shall not want any good thing. Let's have a word of prayer and just ask the Lord's blessings. Father, it, it truly is a, a wonderful opportunity to open your book and to allow you to speak to us. And I pray, Lord, this evening that each one of us would just have a heart of uh, being willing to receive uh, your word, what you have for us. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you'll take your word, make the application to each one of us individually as only you can. And Lord, I pray for your power, for your wisdom. Lord, I ask that you would be glorified through this time that we spend in the word of God and through the remaining part of this service. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Verses 1 to 10 that we just read has to do with David's praise. He's, again, looking back on this experience. Uh, first of all, what David, uh, that's number one, David's praise. Number uh, letter A there, what David resolved, what David resolved, and that's found in the first three verses, he made up his mind to bless the Lord at all times. Now, that'd be a good thing for us, wouldn't it? To bless the Lord at all times. This word bless uh, has the idea of kneeling before a superior. And so David said, I've learned from this experience to bless the Lord at all times. Now, he was away from his homeland. He was uh, among people that were not his, really his friends at all. And when they found out who he was, of course, they didn't treat him so well. So what he did, he feigned madness. He spit on the walls and let stuff go down his beard, and they thought he's, he's, he's lunatic. You know, this guy, let's get rid of him, and the Philistine king said, get him out of here. So that's how he got out. And so David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. When we're having a good day, bless the Lord. When things are not going so well, Bless the Lord. He is worthy of our praise. You say, I don't feel like it. That's probably the time you need to bless the Lord the most. when <laughs> You don't feel like it. And for me as well. So he said, I'm going to bless the Lord. He resolved to do this. He made up his mind. Come whatever comes my way, I'm going to bless the Lord. Um, my circumstances may change, but my attitude toward God doesn't. Another way to look at that, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. has nothing to do with our circumstances. God is just as good. He can only be good. He can't be anything else, no matter what circumstances may come our way. There's a couple of things that we should remember in any situation we face. Number one, and this is not on your handout sheet, but things are never as bad as they could be. You ever think about this when you're having a difficult time and you, all you have to do is look around and you think, you know, when I look at that person and what they're experiencing, I'm, I really have it pretty good. Things are not nearly as bad as they could be. Another thing to keep in mind is Romans 8:28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to to his purpose. So if we'll keep those things in mind, it will help us uh, to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, uninterrupted praise to God was another thing David resolved. He determined to talk to the Lord. Uh, here's a question for us to ask ourselves. Are there situations that come into our lives and we get so upset that we don't want to talk to the Lord? And probably the answer to that to all of us is yes. I'm not talking to God. I don't feel like it. I have an attitude. We all have that time, all those times in our lives, don't we? And I'm not going to talk to God right now. I don't feel like it. But David resolved something here. Uh, he resolved to talk to the Lord all the time. There would be a closeness between him and God that nothing could separate. Now David realized not everyone would want to hear his praise to God. He said, the humble 
shall hear thereof and be glad. When God blesses you, he does something for you. And, and people that don't love the Lord don't get excited about that. Don't, don't be surprised by that. Uh, they're not really, they don't have an exciter. They don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them to get them excited. Uh, so, uh, but he said, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He said, I'm going to magnify the Lord in verse 3. You can picture David. He's got uh, sort of a ragtag group of men, maybe four, 600 men that are outcasts just like him right now. And he's saying to those men as they're gathered around, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together um, to proclaim God's greatness. You and I can't do anything to make God any greater than he is. It's impossible. But here's what we can do. We can magnify God's name so that he becomes great to us. Great to us. Somebody asked Hudson Taylor one time about his work in China. And they were trying to say, Mr. Taylor, you must be a man of great faith. And he said, oh, no. I have a God who is faithful. I serve a great God. And so um, David is looking at this and he's saying, I want to praise God looking back on this experience and take this with me. You know what God is doing in, in this instance, in the big picture? He's preparing David for someday when he will sit on the throne and be the king of Israel. And God's using this experience as one of many things that happen in his life to prepare him for that. Things that are happening to you and to me today, God is preparing us for something greater that he has for us down the road. Uh, so uh, exalt his name together talks about public worship. This is an encouragement for us uh, as it's a united effort to lift up his name on high. So uh, it's a wonderful thing to gather together and hear you sing and hear people praise the Lord and, and have a word of testimony. That's a wonderful thing. And I never, never tire of that. So uh, what David resolves, uh, be there what David remembered. What David remembered. Verses 4 through 6. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Again, looking back on this experience, David remembers some things. Um, he sought the Lord, and when he did, God heard him and delivered him. What did God deliver David from? The Philistines? Well, yes, from the human standpoint yes but more importantly his fears he delivered me from all my fears in verse number four the word fear here it's interesting it means a storehouse or a granary I was a kid growing up on the out in the country in North Carolina my granddaddy had a, a granary a storage place where he would put corn and he would store that and then feed it to horses or uh, sometimes they would take this corn and, and feed it to the chickens as well. And uh, a lot of the farmers, they like to have this, uh, get a king snake and put it in there in their corn bin because it takes care of mice and it doesn't harm humans. And so he had this granary. And uh, that's the picture here. A granary is a place for storage for corn or some other type of grain. And so David has been living in a prison of fear. You know, there are people that store up fear. Did you, do you know anybody like that? I mean, everything to them is fearful. The world's falling apart. Everything's bad in the world. And they're consumed by fear God doesn't want us to live that way that's not from God so David you, you can imagine all the things that went through his mind when he's down there in Gath 
all the fears. What if they kill me? What if, what if, what if, you know, and some people live their lives that way. What if? God doesn't want us to live that way either. Now, sometimes you can ask that question, but to live that way? No. Uh, that's a life of fear. So uh, he was glad that God could get him out. Uh, to, that corn in the granary, somebody got to go out there and get it out to feed the chickens, to give it to the cows. You and I cannot deliver ourselves from our fears, but God can if we give them to him. And he's more than willing to do that. In verse 5, he changes. If you notice, they. Before he said, I, verse 1, I will bless the Lord. Verse 4, I sought the Lord. And now he changes to they in verse number 5. Um, <clears throat> to change from the singular to the plural. So it teaches us this. When an individual puts his full trust in God, others are helped and blessed also. David, no doubt, was an encouragement to these men who were with him. And he would be an encouragement to a lot of other people down the road because he had victory over the fears in his life. The word looked means they looked to God with respect, with affection. And the word lightened, uh, they looked unto him and were lightened in verse 5. When you look to God, not only will your countenance be lightened, but your load, the burden you carry, will be lightened as well. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We can come to God and cast every care and not only are we helped when we do that, but other people are helped and blessed because of our lives when we take everything to the Lord. So David is learning these things. Uh, these uh, people looked nowhere else, for they found in the Lord all they needed. They weren't ashamed. That means there's no disappointment in him. All of us get disappointed a lot of times. But God never disappoints us. He's never the source of disappointment. It could be ourselves. It could be other people. It could be circumstances. But God does not disappoint us. In verse 6, notice he said, This poor man cried. And not poor in the sense of how much money he had or didn't have. But he's talking about being downcast, afflicted, being weak in spirit. Um, God hears that kind of person when they cry out to him. When a person says, Lord, I'm weak. I need help. Please help me. And they cry out to God. God never fails to hear that kind of cry. He uh, delights in hearing that. In Psalm 55, verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Psalm 18, 6, in my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Has God heard your cry today? Has he heard my cry today? Have we cried out to God and ask him for help. So often what I find myself doing, a, something, a problem comes and I dash right into it, you know, I'm going to get this thing taken care of and then God stops me and says, wait a minute, have you prayed about this? You ever had that experience? You ever, you ever done? <laughs> and <clears throat> praise the Lord that he does that. Crying out to God. This poor man cried. God will not hear proud, haughty people. He will not regard their cry. There are people who like to use God just for a, 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 a safety net, you know, or they, they push a button, an emergency button. Well, God is merciful and he's gracious and he may help you in a situation like that, but he's not obligated to. For God to hear is to deliver. Prayer is the key that unlocks the door of trouble and sets us free. So David 
Uh, we find what he resolved, what he remembered, and then what David realized. What David realized. Verses 7 to, through 10. Uh, there are two things. First of all, God protects. God protects. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 7. Eight, old taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man that trusteth in him. Uh, we'll read some other verses later, but uh, the angel of the Lord here speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ encamping round about those that, that fear him. Uh, a man named John Phillips said this, if we had other larger eyes than ours, we would see all about us in the air the mighty countless host of hell. They're here right now in this place. Those fearful principalities and powers, those rulers of this world's darkness, those wicked spirits in high places. But we would see too the resplendent ranks of the shining ones, the mighty angels of God drawn up in battle array to preserve and protect the saints of God. Above and beyond them all is the glorious angel of the Lord himself. Remember this. When you go through situations, trials, testings, challenges, you're not alone. You're never alone as a child of God. You have the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have a host of his angels fighting on your behalf to protect you spiritually, and oftentimes physically they protect us. David realized this. He said, I didn't get out of there. This wasn't my doing. It wasn't because of my great intellect or my skill or my ability. He said, God did this for me. He helped me. So he's given God all the glory, all the credit for it. It's a beautiful picture. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Uh, this idea of camping is, is interesting. Uh, the Bible indicates there are at least two factors were considered when a campsite was chosen for opposing armies or they were out on a war campaign or something. One, the availability of water. It doesn't matter how many troops you have. If you get out stranded in a place and there's no water for those troops, you're not going to be very effective when it comes time to do battle. You've got to have water. Now, this is our water. This is our source right here. We have to have this. It's the word of God. That was a, a key factor they, they considered. Uh, in, you find an example of this in Judges 7, 1. Then Zerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, where the water was, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And then another factor that was considered was that there needed to be a line of natural defense so as to form a barricade. Uh, in 1 Samuel 17, 3, the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. That valley was a natural barricade, if you will. It was an open space. And so one side was on the hillside of this side, the other side over here, and the valley in between. And so when we think about um, the matter of the, of the camp, um, the Israelite camp was adjacent to the tabernacle where the presence of God dwelt. So God encamps around us. His presence is with us at all times. Cleanliness in the camp when they uh, would go out was imperative. You find this in Numbers. I won't go there, but Numbers chapter 5. Anyone who was a leper or had touched a dead person had to be put outside the camp, away from all the other people. So cleanliness was absolutely essential. The dead were buried outside the camp, not inside, but they had to take them outside the camp and bury them properly away from every, everything where disease and those sort of things would, would not be a, a problem. 
And then criminals were always executed outside the camp. Remember when Jesus, when he was crucified, he was not crucified inside the city walls. He was outside the camp. The book of Hebrews uh, talks about this in, in chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, Jesus suffered without the gate, outside of the city, without the camp, in other words. And so the camp was too close to God's presence to allow sin or impurity uh, to come in. Uh, the word encampa talks about bending down, pitching a tent, and there's a beautiful picture uh, of how the Lord Jesus came in to this world and camped with us, his presence. And now he's going back to heaven. The Holy Spirit indwells us uh, as believers. And he is our, uh, from, from the Lord we de derive uh, nourishment, sustainment. That's the water from him. Uh, we also have our defense. He's our supernatural barricade. Um, so uh, we find uh, God protects. And then God provides. God provides, verses 8 through 10. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. God provides. It's amazing to me how God provides. Do you know, we live in a very fragile uh, environment. The whole world does. You go to the commissary or you go to the uh, convenience store or we go out to Coughland or wherever and, and we just take it for granted. The food's on the shelf, everything's there. But do you ever think about the effort that it takes to get that food to you? Sometimes, I, I haven't done this, maybe I did once or twice, but I, sometimes I just want to thank the cashier or ask for the manager and thank them for working to put stuff out so we can have something to eat. Somebody has to work. Trucks, somebody drove the stuff in with a truck. It may come part of the way by train or even by air in some cases. Uh, there's a lot of effort that goes into that. And then somebody's got to take that and sort it all out in the warehouse, bring it out, stock it on the shelf, put the right price on it, all those kind of things. And then, of course, there's always, you've got to pay somebody for it, right? So there's always got to be a cashier as a part of that food chain. So uh, God provides uh, and praise the Lord for his goodness. And I think so often about our church, how God has provided through the years. The only reason that this church is here is because God has sustained us. He has provided. That's the only explanation. And so we praise God for his provision. David experienced this. He tasted. Uh, to taste and see, try and experience. Try and experience. David said, I've learned by my own experience, God provides. That's easy for us to look at someone and see God providing for them. But how about for us? Have we tried and experienced God for ourselves? When we had a need, did we pray and ask God and see him take care of that need? Taste and see that the Lord is good. In verse number 9, we find the word fear again. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to them that fear him. And that talks about the proper kind of fear, of course, reverence, respect for God. He says those who do that will have no want or lack of anything they need. Look at verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Maybe you've wondered at times, what is that talking about? Um, lions are a good example here because... They're mentioned in the Bible for their strength, their boldness, their ferocity, their stealth. Um, but here the idea is this. Those who attempt to enjoy the good things of life without seeking the Lord are living like the wild beast of which the lion is most notorious. That lion has to go out every day hunting, looking for a meal. And some people 
Humans live that way. They're going out every day, going to take care of everything themselves. And we know, those of us who have tried that, that that's not a good way to live. It's a miserable way to live. Number two, David's proclamation. So we saw his praise. His proclamation, verses 11 to 22, we'll pick up with verse 11 here. Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Again, think of this context David reflecting back thinking back what he's learned by his own experience his proclamation here first the summons the summons uh, he's summoning his men at the cave a cave called Adullam and he's saying to them gather around I have something to say to you in verse 11 come you children hearken unto me I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Let me tell you what God has done for me. Verse 12, the subject. He says to them, What man is he that desireth life, loveth many days, that he may see good? What man doesn't want to live to a ripe old age and experience the good life, if you will? And so David is going to speak about this. Uh, See the sermon, and you find this all the way 13 to 20. Uh, God was pleased with David's sermon, and he quoted part of it in 1 Peter 3, verses 10 to 12. We won't take time to turn there. Uh, But David urges his men to listen to his exposition. Verses 13 to 16, there are three things. Uh, Little A there, take heed to your words. Take heed to your words. Again in verse 13. Keep thy tongue from evil. That's a command, isn't it? Do we always obey that command? I wish we could say we did, but we don't. But we are commanded. God commands us. That's to be our goal. Keep thy tongue from evil. But, but they, I just had to say something. Oh, 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 maybe we should bite our tongue sometimes. <laughs> when we, we just have to speak, we think. Keep thy tongue from evil. Well, that'd be a good verse to take with us to work tomorrow, wouldn't it? Or out on the playground or wherever we might find ourselves, out, of, out in the community. Out in the KMCC, keep thy tongue from evil. I know most people don't do that, but God commands us to do that. And if he commands it, that means it's possible, isn't it? Through the power of God. Take heed to your words. David was not boasting of the tactics he used to get out of Gath. Rather, he is lamenting his behavior. He's advising others not to make the same mistake he had made. Evil talks about that which is wicked, wrong, or injurious to others, and guile refers to deceit. That's exactly what David had been guilty of. He deceived, feigning himself to be a madman. That's lying, isn't it? He's, that's deception. And David said, he didn't learn his lesson completely because he had some other things down the road that were deceitful as well. But it's something all of us can certainly work at and ask God to help us with. 
B, little B there, take heed to your walk in verse 14. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. Depart, walk the other way. Walk away from evil. Now, I know we're exposed to things, sometimes we have no control over it, but where you can, walk away from it. Don't hang around when you don't have to. Depart, he tells us here. Take heed to your walk. You make a conscious decision to turn away from that which is evil. The alternative there that God gives us is to do good, seek peace, pursue it. And that pattern is found throughout Scripture. Turn away from that which is evil and do that which is good. Isaiah 1, verse 16, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings, for before mine eyes cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. So God tells them what not to do, and then he tells them what they should be doing. And that's a pattern all the way through the Bible. Job 36 and verse 7. I hope you'll mark this. If you take notes or mark things in your Bible, Job 36 and verse 7, remember this. Take this with you. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. Isn't that a wonderful thought? That God is always looking at you. He's concerned about you. He never takes his eyes off you or off me. What a wonderful thought that is. And let me finish that verse. Uh, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. He's speaking about the righteous all the way through that verse. Job 36, 7. Let me read that first part of that one more time. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. Never a moment when you're not in God's thoughts. Never a moment when you're not in his sights. We're always on his mind, on his, in his thoughts, and in his sight. All right, let me finish up here. Uh, he says to take heed to your works. Did I, did I mention that one at all here? Uh, okay, yes, I did say that. Uh, take heed your works. And then uh, the next thing, learn from his example. Learn from his example. That is David's example, verses 17 to 20. So again, David was speaking from his own experience. Um, look at verse 20. This is interesting. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Now, David didn't ha have any bo broken bones here that, uh, because of his experience, he said, God watched over me in spite of me. But prophetically, there's a reference here also, speaking of Christ. When he was hanging on the cross and the other two thieves, they broke their legs. But when they saw that Jesus was already dead, in the Gospel of John, you read, they didn't break his legs. So he was already dead. And so that's a prophetic reference there as well. Uh, he keepeth all his bones. It means this. God is working on the outside to protect us, but he's also working on the inside. In the bones, if we could open up our arm, for example, and take a look inside the bone, you'll find something called marrow. You can't live without that. I can't live without it. That's the very essence of life that flows through your bones is in the marrow. And so God is protecting us not only from the outside, but he also works on the inside. Spiritually, physically, God is working, doing things that we are not even aware of. We can't even comprehend. Summarizing in uh, the last the D there, the summary, um, <clears throat> that word desolate in verse number 21, evil shall slay the wicked. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. 
The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. That word desolate means guilty. Found it in verse 21 and in verse 22. Uh, The wicked will be tried in God's court concerning his treatment of the righteous and found guilty. God says to this wicked world, go ahead, you, you treat my people badly if you want to. But I guarantee you this, God's reckoning day is coming. And God will right every wrong, every wrong that's been done to you just because you're righteous, because you're a believer. God is going to make that right. But remember this, it's in his time, not ours. In his time. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. They're going to end up with nothing. They're going to lose everything. They may have a lot now, materially, but they're going to lose it all. God's people will be found not guilty. He redeemeth the soul of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So David is saying, I've learned through this experience that those who are evil and wicked, he may have Saul in mind when he's thinking about this. Saul's the king. He lives in luxury. And he hunts me like an animal. But he takes courage in this. Saul's day is coming. God's going to deal with him. God will take care of him. It's not for me to go and and regain my strength and, and take a stealth attack, a surprise attack, and kill Saul and have all my worries over. He's not going to do that. He said, I'm going to leave this with the Lord. It's not for you and I to seek revenge or to try to get even. You let God take care of that. He's far more capable of it than you and I are. And God will do it in his time. He'll do it right. Uh, So uh, I hope that you and I will learn from David's experience uh, that he's had. All of us have those times. We all do. When you go through a difficult time in your life, it may be a, a time of outright spiritual rebellion. When you go through that time and God brings you out on the other side, you look back on that and see how God helped you and praise his name for helping you, for bringing you through it. I don't know the number of times I'd lose count in my own life. Times when I just said, I'm done, I'm through. And then God would give me a scripture. And I'd just start talking to the Lord. And God brought me through. And he'll do the same for each one of us. But look back and learn from those times. Remember this. Bible knowledge plus Bible application equals Christian growth. Bible knowledge plus Bible application equals Christian growth. David experienced that. Let's stand. I'm really man of you come. We'll get a song ready in a moment. Thank you so much for being here this evening and appreciate your um, attention to God's word. <clears throat> Lord, we ask you now as we get ready for a, just an invitation time, Lord, that you would just bless. And thank you, Lord, for putting this story in the Bible for us and to encourage us, to admonish us, to help us. And Lord, we're no different from David. We get discouraged at times. We have difficulties that come, challenges, issues. And yet, Lord, we, we learn as David did that if we would just cry out to you, that you will take us through. And Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for the confidence that we can have in who you are and in your ability to see us through. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 14.
496 in your blue books. I surrender all. Turn that uh, prayer sheet over. <clears throat> and we have here under uh, salvation requests, we have the Ploker family. These are one of our neighbors across the way that we've been praying for, witnessing to for many years. Uh, for Jayla Houghton, for uh, the country of Syria, which is in a lot of turmoil, of course, right now. Uh, Panzer Kasern, those who uh, work there or frequent that place, and then co-workers, neighbors. Any additions on the salvation? Any other, uh, anyone else you'd like to add to this? Or maybe a praise that somebody's been saved recently. Yes, sir. Uh, Torsen's family, okay. All right, yes, ma'am. Okay, Michael, Oscar, okay, praying for Oscar, I think I met him, but I, okay, all right, so keep Oscar lifted up, all right, any others for salvation, salvation, okay, we'll add these on, um, <clears throat> let's see, Brother Kivy, if you would, uh, Pray for these just now, if you would, all these uh, salvation requests for us, if you would. Thank you. Uh, over on calendar request, uh, of course, the, uh, I think we mentioned most of these already. Um, coming up in September, which isn't really that far away, uh, the Rudesheim Rhine River excursion uh, trip. So Pastor will give us more information about that a little bit later. That's on September the 3rd, Labor Day. 
um, our missionaries here. We uh, have David and Jenny Harris that we've been praying for this month. And we had a good report from Brother Harris there last week. And souls being saved, we praise the Lord for that. And then tonight, the Sir Panadorns uh, serving there in Thailand. And that's a picture of their family with uh, their son and daughter who work with them as well. And then for the Hornungs, uh, which we'll hear from next week, uh, serving for, I think, about 40 years up in uh, the Mainz area. Um, Mrs. Horning, uh, they both will turn 80, and I think they both have already this year. So let's keep these uh, folks in prayer as well. All right, then, <clears throat> under the special request, um, any, any changes to these deployed uh, ones? That we have here any additions or any of these come back that we know of okay all right then our church uh, finances our students uh, some of which are taking a little break this summer going to camp and doing different things some are working uh, pray for our church family this week we're uh, asking prayer for the powell and reeves families we praise the lord for them and the blessing that they are to us and for the persecuted believers in the country of Bangladesh, uh, for our president, uh, leaders of our country, and then for Mrs. Merkel, the leaders of Germany, uh, for unspoken needs. How about unspoken request? All right. All right, thank you. Eight, nine, nine unspokens. All right. <clears throat> All right, then for any, any changes on the expecting moms here? Expecting families, okay. All right. Uh, other requests, any, any other uh, special prayers, praises? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She's working at or at BIMI. Okay, they're in Tennessee. Okay, pray for Becca's mom. All right, other other needs, uh, Leah. Okay, this is a young lady named Chantel <clears throat> and has a pretty serious infection in her foot and yeah, so pray for her for her healing and for encouragement there. Spinal bifida, yes, okay. All right, other, other, uh, Prayer request? Yes, sir. What kind of climbing is that again? Ice, Ice climbing. <laughs> okay. Uh, sounds like fun to me. You know? <laughs> sounds cool. Yeah. All right. Ice climbing. All right. Pray for safety there. All right. Any others? Any others? All right. Um, okay, well, let's, uh, Brother Torsten, if you will uh, just remember any of these uh, other extra requests that you can, uh, as many of them, and uh, if you will pray for that. Uh, and then uh, Brother Steve Flores, if, uh, if you would take our uh, special requests are the deployed and the church finances, that, that section. And... Uh, and then I'll pray for the expecting families and our missionaries here. So, uh, Brother Torson, if you'll start us out.
Uh, Father, we do uh, thank you as we continue in prayer uh, for, uh, Lord, all the opportunities that we've had to pray through Wednesday evenings and all the requests, Lord, and uh, we're grateful for this occasion. And uh, I pray, Lord, for the expectant moms, uh, Stephanie and Rebecca, for Ellen. I pray, Lord, that you would give them comfort through their pregnancy, that you would just encourage them. pray you'd watch over the little ones they carry. And, Lord, when the delivery time comes, that uh, things will go well for them. They'll have healthy children. And we ask you bless bless these families and encourage them. And, uh, Lord, we... Uh, we do pray for the Harris family, David and Jenny. We thank you for their work through so many years, of, for their faithfulness, and we pray you will continue to bless them and open doors of opportunity. Uh, Brother David does a, a good deal of travel, and I pray you'd watch over his travels, keep him safe, and Lord, just use him at every place and people he comes in contact with, that he might be able to see souls saved and be a blessing to the churches. And Lord, I pray for uh, the Sarah Panadorns, that you will continue to bless their work and based out of Thailand, but making inroads into Burma and uh, even on the border with China and Laos and working uh, some with the Aka Indian uh, people. And Lord, we're just grateful for all the churches that have been started there, for souls that have been saved, people are being trained for your service. And we pray you just continue to bless and meet every need and encourage these dear people reaching souls in their area of the world with the gospel of Christ. And Lord, uh, <clears throat> uh, we do pray you'd bless the ladies' meeting uh, tomorrow evening. Pray they have a wonderful time in fellowship together. And Lord, that you would just uh, bless each one and encourage them. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'll continue to bless in the teen camp and in the junior camp. Lord, that you just have your way with every heart and that you'll be glorified in decisions made there that would last for eternity. Lord, we pray for the VBS and Lord, that you would just prepare the way and begin even now to show us people that we can invite and reach out to, Lord, and invite them to come and uh, have them here, Lord, so they can hear the gospel and pray especially for those who maybe don't have any church home or um, maybe some would come just to out of curiosity to see what's going on but Lord we just pray that you would uh, bring people in that you'd bless every invitation and use all of our efforts Lord reaching souls through this effort for your glory uh, Lord we again uh, thank you for your goodness to us um, thank you for uh, the faithfulness of your people and I pray you'd bless as we continue through this week now and just guide us and direct us every step. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you.